Hello everyone, my name is Ryan Brong. Today we're going to go over pro packing a Ram Air parachute. We have an instructional video for everyone, but before we begin, we'd like to go over a few pre uh, preliminary statements and uh, prerequisites. So, to begin, some prerequisites before packing. First of all, we ask that you have the general ability to maneuver in a supine and kneeling position. There are a few parts of packing that are going to require that you are in these positions and they can cause strain to some muscles. Next, we ask that you have a general knowledge of parachute components. We will be going over many of the com parachute components that are involved in packing in the video. However, things will go a lot better if you have a general knowledge of how it works and hopefully you've made a few skydives. Packing generally isn't taught until about midway through your accelerated free-for-all pro program. So hopefully you've had a few, few jumps to get familiar with your, with your parachute and your rig. Next, we ask you to have persistence. Packing is a very difficult thing to understand and it's going to take some time. It's going to take you a long time to pack your first few times and it'll only get better from there. It might take you about 45 minutes to an hour to pack a parachute to begin with, but as you get better after 10, 20, 30 pack jobs, it'll take you as little as 15, maybe even 10 minutes. The, the time it takes to pack reduces drastically as you get more experience. Last, uh, we ask that you have the capacity to accept the risks associated with packing and then jumping your own pack job, because that's ultimately what you'll be doing, not only packing, but also jumping it. And that comes with a few mental um, barriers, and we just ask that you are aware of those before beginning. Okay, so the first question you should probably ask yourself is, where should I pack? And uh, here I've created a hierarchy of, of ideal pack packing um, environments. So first, the first thing you want is an area free of sharp objects. This is pretty obvious. You don't want any sharp objects to get caught in the lines, snag a line, cut it, or cut the fabric on your parachute. That could be, that's obviously very detrimental to both you and your parachute. Next, after that, we'd like you to have a large area with few obstacles. This is, this is simple because the lines on a parachute are very long and the canopy, depending on how large a canopy is, will take up a lot of room. Next, we also ask that you have a floor area with padding. This isn't necessary, but it certainly will help you. Like I've said before, you will be kneeling and supine in some instances, and having padding will greatly reduce any pressure on your body. And last but not least, an indoor area is preferable. Many people pack outside. However, when you're just beginning to pack, wind can be your enemy. Certainly. So if you're packing outside and there's wind, it, it's, it's a little bit tougher. Usually isn't a problem for people with more experience, but if you're just starting out, it's probably a good idea to find an indoor area. Uh, here's an example of a perfect, uh, of an ideal packing environment. This is the one that Skydive Spaceland uses. As you can see, there's no sharp objects, it's open, there's very few obstacles, and it's carpeted, which will provide padding for for the girl, as you can see, who's kneeling and actually stowing her lines at this point, which we will go over in the video, of course. Okay, last but not least, we have an overview of what to expect in the following video. We've broken it down into three sections, packing, that is. First, we have the preparing the line set, canopy, and fab can canopy fabric. After this, we have folding the canopy into the deployment bag, and then finally closing the deployment bag and packing the parachute. Hopefully this gives you an idea of, what to of what's to come. Obviously there's many subsections to all of these sections that will be gone over extensively in the video. So without further ado, I'd like to begin the video. Enjoy. So here you see the closing loop that is used to keep the pin against the deployment back. Here you see the brake toggles connected to the brake lines that are used to slow your descent and also turn in the sky. Here is the slider which is a piece of fabric that slows deployment. You can see that there's toggles to deactivate it in the sky. Here are the suspension lines that are attached to the risers in the bottom of the canopy that keep you connected to it. Here is the closing pin that goes through the closing loop during the last stage of packing. Here you can see an indicator to let you know if your pilot chute is cocked. Here is the actual pilot chute. You can see how it catches air when it's cocked right now. This is the hacky that you can access during deployment, which initiates it. And you can see that it's connected to the bridle, which continues all the way down to the deployment bag. 
that you see here. This is the tail fabric of the canopy. You can see it's the edge. There's no lines connected here. This is the warning label. Okay, so what you need to begin your packing, you need an unpacked rake with a parachute that's just behind you. Um, this is just simply a pull of cord. cord. It's just a piece of cloth, cloth um, that is used in the final stages of packing, which I'll get to later. And <clears throat> this is just a packing weight which keeps your rig stationary when you're working with the lines. It's simply it's a big canister filled with sand. A lot of things, a lot of things will work as a packing weight. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set the brakes. Simply what this is, is uh, we're going to put the brakes in a, a set location so that when your canopy opens, you'll actually not be in a full descent. So simply pull down the line until you see the cat eye, cat's eye. You're going to put the top pointy part of the steering toggle through the cat's eye like this. And then you're going to insert it into the pocket that's located right here. And sometimes, you know, this is just specific specific to my container, but it'll have another tab down here to keep it in place, which you can do. And then you have, you'll notice you have extra line. We don't want that flapping around when uh, our canopy opens, so they've added a stow tab in the back that we can simply fold into there. There you go. It should look like that. And you're gonna wanna do that to both brakes. Okay, so you're going to take your packing weight and you're going to want to put it right in the bottom of the container, right where your deployment bag is going to go with the canopy in it. Again, that'll help keep everything stationary when you're pulling on the lines. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is run our lines and that just makes sure that the lines are not tangled with each other and that they're in the order that they're supposed to be. So simply you're just going to come down and pick up your lines and literally run them up to the canopy. So we can, we can lift it up, lift the whole canopy up, shake it around a little bit, make sure everything's where it's supposed to be. Okay, so now you have your canopy held like this. This is what it should look like at this point. You're gonna step from out in between the lines, transfer the lines to one hand. You can put it over either shoulder. You're gonna drape it over your shoulder like this. And you're also, this is the slider. You can go ahead and put that behind you because you're not gonna need it right away. Okay, so what you want to do is turn the canopy a little bit away from you. This is going to expose the cells. This is what inflates with air and keeps you, keeps you buoyant in the sky when your parachute opens. So my particular canopy has seven cells. Some canopies have nine cells. So what you want to do is just count out your cells, right? So we're going to count out seven for this one. One, put it right here on your hip. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now you have all seven or nine cells in your hand. We flake it out. And you're gonna go ahead and put those cells in between your legs. Close it nice and tight. Okay. So now you have the draped canopy in front of you with all the lines. What we're gonna do now is work on the lines, make sure they're prepared nicely and that fabric is on the outside with the lines on the inside. This is very important. So here are the lines. You have some on each side. You want to get nice and spread out and so you have some separation. And what you're going to do is these sets of lines that are closest to you, you're going to see um, that they're connected here and that they form a nice U-shape into the next line set. These are So what you want to do is just stick your hand down there shake it out a little bit, make sure it's all back there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna continue down the canopy to the next line set. Again, stick your hand down, flake it out a little bit. And so far it should generally look like this. Again, see the lines on the inside and all the fabric material on the outside. Okay, and you're gonna continue to do that one more time for these lines, and again, they get longer as you go down the canopy. So you're going to have to stick your hand a little bit down. You might have to lift the canopy up a little bit and just make sure that again the lines are on the inside with the fabric on the outside. And you're going to trace the tail. You're going to want to trace the tail which is again the end of the 
the fabric of the canopy all the way down make sure it's it looks you know it's not crumpled up or anything trace it. and we're going to go to the other side we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side so at this point your canopy should look like this each side of the canopy should have their lines nice Okay, so now we flaked out the canopy. The next step is setting your slider. Now remember, we put this back behind our shoulder to get it out of the way, but now we're gonna have to bring it down, slide it all the way down to as far as it'll go, and we're gonna do something called quartering the slider. Now basically, you'll see that there's four grommets, and there's four areas for fabric to come out, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick our hand in between each of those four slots, and make sure that is facing outward like so, on each side. So we're gonna, again, we're gonna do that on each side. Each side, okay. So now that it is quartered, this will slow your opening. And it's probably one of the most important things you make sure, you have to make sure you do it well in your pack job because if you don't, you're gonna have a quick opening and it could actually result in serious injury or death. People have actually died from faulty slider and too quick of an open. Okay, so next what we want to do is we want to take our tail fabric, which is away from us. And you're going to find the warning label and the seam that the warning label is on. You're going to bring it up towards the slider. You're going to find your warning label on your seam. That's when you, that's when you look like this. And you're going to wrap the tail fabric directly around your whole canopy. So you're just gonna, you, using your knee, you're just gonna keep the inner fabric in place and wrap the canopy like so. <clears throat> On the other side, <clears throat> you're going to find these two seams and bring them together so that it completely encloses the canopy. <clears throat> now to tighten this, what we usually do is we line up both seams, make sure, making sure that it's tight against the slider grommets. And we're simply going to row the two seams together like so. This will also help ensure that you have a nice slow opening, which is very important. Your roll, your roll should look something like this, you know, keep it tight, not too tight. Three or four rolls is usually appropriate. <clears throat> We're gonna place it against our chest. So you can go ahead and hug it a little bit. This will deflate it somewhat. And then when you got it deflated enough, you're gonna grab about arm's length, about as far as you can go, you're gonna grab some fabric between your, between your two fingers and you're going to wrap it around the back, pulling it tightly. So your canopy should look something like this at this point, wrapped around nicely, and you're going to step outside the canopy, and just gently lay it on the ground. You're going to put your knee right where the slider grommets are, they're metal, so you should be able to feel them with your knee. And you're going to, with your hands, you're going to work the fabric and get it nice and tight. So what this stage is all about is getting it into a nice size that will fit into the deployment bag. That is the purpose of this stage. Okay, so you should see the seam facing you and the warning label down here. What you're just simply going to do is, you're, with your hands on top of the fabric, simply work your way towards the back end of the parachute and roll it in so that it gets nice and small. And we're going to work up slowly. You can move your knees up a little bit. Making sure to keep your knees on it to keep the slider in place because if that moves around, again, it's going to result in a bad opening. Keep working it, making it thinner and thinner, and at this point, we want to get most of the air out of the canopy. So we're going to go ahead and lay down on it. This will help deflate it, so with your pelvis against the slider, again, to keep it from moving, you're going to lay down on it, and you're going to deflate each side, getting all the air out of it. We want to get it completely vacant of air. Use your weight to help you out a little bit. You can even take 
there's no lines up towards this end of the canopy, so you can even take this and roll it a little bit underneath. This will, again, help to make your canopy as small as possible so that it'll fit nicely in the deployment bag, which is the next step after we get it nice and tight. All right. All right, at this point, this is what it should look like. You have your warning label down here and your center seam running along the center of the canopy. It should be nice and tight with most of the air out. It'll try to reinflate because this is, that's what the material wants to do, it wants to inflate, which is good when you're in the sky. But as long as you got most of the air out, this next step should be a lot easier for you. So now that we've got the canopy nice and tight in the width direction, we want to compress it so that it's about the depth of the deployment bag. So the way we do that is we do folds, and they're called S-folds, which you'll, you'll see why in a second. First thing you want to do is you want to grab the lines towards the slider, make sure that's firmly in place. And about, maybe about a third of the way up the canopy, you're going to make your first S-fold. Should look like that, simply, simply just fold it like an S on top of itself, and you can see the S right here. And that's your first S fold, and we're gonna do one more. But what you need to do now is place your knee directly on top of that. Now this does a few things, it keeps it compressed, and also keeps that slider in place so that it's not moving around again, because that's one of the main things we do not want to happen. So now at this point, you have your knee on it, it's not going anywhere. So you can work with the material that probably caught a little bit of air you know, in the time it took you to do that last step. So again, same thing that we did before, just keep working it down, working it down. You can use your hands, you can even use your body if you need to, but I just use my hands. Making sure that all that air out, air is out, because it's gonna make it a lot easier when we try to get it in that deployment bag soon enough. So at this point I have all my air out, so I want to do my second S-fold, right? So how I do that is I, again, push my hands underneath, just like you're getting the air out, about another, about half the way up to what, what is left besides the S-fold of your canopy. So you're going to grab the seam, the roll that we made in the back, and you're going to pinch it tight, pinch it very tight. And for this S-fold, what we're going to do is we're going to use our hand and push it over our wrist of the other hand, which is clamping it in the back. We're gonna push it down. That'll help keep it nice and tight. And you can place it right against your knee. So again, it should look like this. You see your first S-fold still down here, and you see the first part of your second S-fold forming right up here. And now that we got that firmly against our knee, we can take this fabric and just start grabbing it and putting it under this fold that we just made, all right? Take this fabric again on both sides and just push it under right like this. And nicely on my canopy, it's all red, so I can tell I'm doing it right because I can just see all red. So now with, it's still firmly against your knee, and I'm putting a decent amount of force on the back here. You're going to remove your leg from this, from this spot, and you're going to place it with your hand there, keeping it firmly against the ground, and you're going to roll this back on itself from completing your second S-fold. And at this point, your canopy should look like a nice box and like it'll fit in the deployment bag, because that's what we're gonna be doing next. Okay, so again, this is what should look like, a nice box folded on itself, keeping it nice and tight. You can either use your hand or your knee to keep it compressed. I use my knee, you're gonna wanna use your knee for this point, actually. So keeping it nice and tight. We take our deployment bag, which is just a few inches down the way here, connected to the canopy, and we're going to put it right next to our canopy, and then we're going to, using both your knee and your forearm, you're going to lift the canopy up and slide the flap of the deployment bag underneath it. Now this part. A lot of people have trouble with this part, especially new, new time jumpers that are just packing for the first time. It's, it's quite difficult because the concept is to wrap the deployment bag around the canopy, but many times what students will do is they will try to shove the canopy in the bag 
and it gets away from the folds come undone and the canopy reinflates. So we don't want that to happen. So again, you're gonna slide the deployment bag underneath your canopy, the, the flap underneath your canopy, excuse me. And you're gonna simply wrap the deployment bag around your parachute, your canopy. So what you wanna do is you wanna get one side in first, wrap one side of the canopy first here, pull it tight, and then using both your knee to keep the other side in place, and your hand, take this side, put it in the other corner. This is probably one of the most difficult parts of packing, but with time, you will get quite good at it and do it very easily. All right, so this is what it should look like again. You can see your folds, you have a crease right here. And if you see your center seam, just about in the middle of the deployment bag. It's not, it's not imperative that that it's exactly in the center, but you want to, you want to be able to see your center line. And again, if, it, if your canopy is uh, sticking out of the bag a little bit, what you can do is just simply roll it in there, roll, roll both of your folds in there towards itself, emphasizing this crease. And you can be firm with the canopy here. You don't have to be gentle with it. You can, you know, you can rough it in there. It's not, it's made to withstand a lot of, a lot of force, all right? So there, it should be nice and deep in there. Okay, so that we have a little bit of slack here. I'm gonna take our flap and pull it towards the other end of the deployment bag, towards the rubber band. You want your grommet to be relatively close your rubber band. Okay. So now that we, now that we pulled the flap over and it's nice and close there, you can using both your knee to keep the bag compressed. Take your rubber band, put it through the grommet like so. the point many times your rubber bands will break at this point and you'll need to replace them okay so now that we have the rubber band through the first grommet which on mine is the middle grommet can take our line all of it and create a little loop simply by forcing both sides of the lines together okay so it should look like this and we're gonna take that loop of line and put it through the rubber band. Through the rubber band. There, see? Should be about two inches, two, and a, two to two and a half inches. So you want it, all of yours, we're gonna create about five more, depending on how much line, how long I make these. Should be about two inches. Okay, so at this point, this is what it should look like. You may have more or less stows depending on your line length. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the next step is to cock the pilot chute. So you're gonna look down here, you'll see a little bit of string about the on the other side of the closing loop on closing pin on the bridle. Right now you see white. What you want to see is some sort of color. Mine is blue, but it could be any color, some sort of reference that to know that you have cocked the pilot chute. Right now it is not cocked. You're going to take the bridle and the pilot chute by the hacky, you're going to put it around your back like this, having tension at each point. So you see there's tension here, there's tension everywhere, and we're just going to pull the hacky away from you, keeping tension everywhere, and that will cock the pilot chute. So what you want to do is wave your pilot chute around and make sure that it's catching air, you know? You see that it's catching air, it's very important that you see that. And you can also look down at the clock we just looked at earlier. And right now, you'll see blue. Again, your color may be different, this is just how I use it to mark it. Okay, so the next step here, now that we've cocked the pilot chute, you're going to place your hand in between both these line sets, keep them separated, take your deployment bag, and transfer it 
to the bottom of the container, bottom of your rig. And for now, you can just place it right in there. Get your pilot chute out of the way for now. Place it right in the bottom. And now we're gonna work on the risers and stow the risers away. So start on either side. Simply lay the risers over top of your reserve risers. These are your reserve risers. Don't worry about that right now. But simply place it over top of your reserve risers like this and put the flap right into the socket right there, making it nice and tight. And now we can put these lines, put them right on top of each other and put them right down here. The slot that it was created right here, right against your reserve container. And it should, it should, if you pull up the flap here, it should be completely concealed. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So what we want to do right now is rotate our D-bag towards us, or away, sorry, away from us actually. We're going to rotate it away from us. So simply grab it and rotate it 90 degrees so that the lines are now facing the bottom of the container towards the, the uh, pouch here, where your pilot chute goes. So it fit there nicely. And now we want to make sure that the pilot chute is going up to the upper right hand corner of our bottom of container. We want to make sure that the bridle is exiting the BOC, the bottom of container, upper right, right like this, like you see. So now we're going to use our pull up cord. You're going to take your pull up cord and you're going to place it through the hole of the closing loop. So you put one end right through the closing loop until it's about halfway down there. You're gonna take both sides, line up both sides. So now that we have our pull-up cord through the closing loop, we are first going to slide it through the bottom grommet first. The bottom grommet is where it's going first. All right, so it should look just like that, okay? And we're actually, we're gonna pull it nice and tight, as tight as you can get it. You're actually going to have to go, you may have to go up to the other side of the container and pull it this way. This takes a little bit of strength so that the closing loop is through the bottom grommet. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put our knee on that to keep it in place. Put your knee right on top of that. We'll keep it nice and tight. And the next grommet we're going to go for is the top grommet. So we're going to put both ends right through the top grommet and do the exact same thing. Pull it down so that the closing loop is through that grommet now. You're going to put your knee on that. Next you're going to go for the right grommet. Same thing. Pull it through. Make sure it's through. Knee on it again. And for the last side, which is the left side, going to put it through and do the same exact thing making sure that it's through, okay? So you can go ahead and put your knee on that while you find your closing pin, and you can verify again that your pilot tree is cocked. Not a bad time to just verify, make sure you did, you've done everything right. So you're going to reveal your closing pin, and there's actually a piece of Velcro right here that you can use to place it right there on top of the Velcro on your rig, you can go ahead and start tucking that that little section of bridle right right underneath the flap right there, just so it's out of the way. Right, so it should look like this at this point with your closing pin right here. So now, what I like to do is make sure that the closing pin is facing like this, so you can see your your um your color there so when you when you check to jump your rig you can actually just quickly open this flap 
and make sure that you're seeing color just again to verify that your pot chew is cocked. You're gonna put your closing loop, closing pin, sorry, right through the closing loop like this, okay? And if, if your bridle up here came out during, during that stage, not a big deal, just put, put it right back in its place, put it on the Velcro, and tuck it away. So at this point, you should see something like this. And now what we want to do is we want to get this, uh, this, uh, this pull-up cord out of the way. So how we do that is we put one side of it underneath the closing pin like this and we just pull. This makes sure that you're not putting unnecessary wear onto your closing loop because if we did not do that, uh, the, the pull-up cord would be rubbing against the cloth and wearing it out. So right now it should look like this. So for the final stage of the pack job, what we want to do is pack our pilot chute. And to do that, just the rest of the bridle, we can just start tucking it. I have this conveniently placed flap. Just start routing it and tucking it right towards the bottom of the container. Yeah, it should look like this. And you're going to take your bridle and start making sure it's not twisted up on you. You want to make sure it's all nice and straight. And we're going to get to our pilot chute here. And we're going to fan our pilot chute out a little bit, making sure that we can see the under fabric here. Lay it out just like this. There are, there are about a million different ways to pack a pilot chute, but I'm just going to go over the simplest way. Not the most important part of the pack job, but it is something that you need to do. You just need to get it folded so it'll fit into the bottom of the container. So one way, a very common way that students have taught at the beginning is just simply line it up along the seam, seam that points to the bottom of the container. See how this seam points to the bottom of the container? You can line it up like this. And you're just gonna start laying your bridle right on top of itself, directly on top of itself. Until, keep going. There you go. Until you have just a little bit of line left. And what we can do here is just fold it in half once so you have a semicircle. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it about almost to the edge, almost to the edge, so it should look just like this, and you're gonna fold the other side almost to the edge until it looks something like this. Simply, at this point, what you can do is simply just fold it one last time and just roll it up. Just make sure it's about the size of the, of the bottom of the container pouch that holds the pilot chute. So then you can grab the bottom of the container, pull it up, and you're just gonna, literally just gonna stuff, stuff it in there. There's no finesse to this part of the pack job. You just wanna get all the fabric in there. All the fabric in there, okay. So you see your, you want your pilot chute, of course, to hang out so that you have access to it when you wanna deploy. And the last thing we just wanna do, just pound it out a little bit. Just hit it, pound it out, and flatten it out. Again, don't worry, you just want to make sure it's flat, you're not damaging anything when you hit it, you just want to make sure it's nice and flat and it might squirt out a little bit, you're just going to make sure all the fabric is inside the bottom of the container and the only thing that is showing is the pod chute. If fabric is out, you may actually cause a premature deployment, which is definitely undesirable. And again, you can just double check to make sure that your bridle is completely exposed and you can just take this flap and put it right underneath there keeping all the bridle pretty much out of sight and away from the wind when you're in the sky. Just make sure it's not very visible. And that is how you pack a parachute.